out and about today, running some errands. So I'm going to be sharing this really, really yummy avocado toast I've been eating lately with tomato and feta and lots of seasoning and all that good stuff. So I'm just actually chopping up some cherry tomatoes and just sauteing them a bit and just, you know, making sure you got some salt on there, some pepper on there, and just adding that while I cut up my avocado and add them to my Ezekiel bread. If you are not into Ezekiel bread yet, it is really good. It's a lower carb bread. I'm trying to, you know, eat cleaner, eat healthier while I'm pregnant to just make sure that the baby is getting those good things. So this is one of my favorite breakfasts. Once I've added that avocado to my bread, I actually add the everything bagel seasoning. This seasoning is specifically from Trader Joe's, but you can find it on Amazon too. That's where I get it. I love this seasoning. And so I put that before the tomato and I've already seasoned the tomato so it's gonna be lots of flavor and stuff because y'all know healthy food can be bland sometimes. You just gotta make sure you season that thing up. And then last but not least, I add a little bit of a balsamic glaze on top just to give it some more flavor and it's so yummy. I would even add meat to this, egg to this if you need some protein extra, if that's something that you watch. But yeah, this is super yummy and an easy way to eat healthy but still feel like you're getting a really hearty but light breakfast. It's not something that's going to make you feel heavy afterwards. Oh my gosh, girl. What? No. How did you get this? Look at your face. No. It's Friday and not going to lie, this past couple weeks have been really tough. We've been having some really difficult family things going on that have shook us. And without going into details or, you know, any of those sorts of things, I just want to talk about how hard it is to balance your immediate family, especially like being a wife now, being a mom, like I haven't been these things for that long, okay? Like, so I will be two in July. I will be, had been married to Mark for a year in June. And so I just feel like not enough people talk about the transition of that and actually sharing that. It's not this beautiful, harmonious picture all the time. I think it's more so important to acknowledge that like it's okay to not know what to do next. It's okay to recognize that when you become a mom, become a wife, and start to be the leader of your family, you have to make decisions that maybe you wouldn't have made prior to being married. And this is speaking specifically from a biblical lens, okay? Because I have to preface that when having, especially conversations about marriage, because Mark and I both come from families of divorce, families of not perfect backgrounds, and we both acknowledged way early on in our relationship that we wanted to do things different. And I think it's important to recognize as well that just because you want to do something different doesn't mean that everything that you experienced when you were growing up was bad. It's kind of like this idea of like, well, I ain't going to be like that with my kids, right? And it's so easy to completely disregard all the good that your childhood brought. I mean, I had a lot of negative things happen in my childhood, okay? And even with all that, I still have to recognize the good. I still have to give my parents credit. And so now that we're in a position as parents, as a married couple, we're actually in a position to make change. And breaking generational curses is like a really hard thing. When you're an adult and you take care of your own family and you have matured to a level where you're no longer, especially being married, you're no longer attached to your parents in the way that you were prior to being married. You have a choice and you have a power that you didn't have as a kid, right? And so the thing is, is that if you try to automatically just go to the extreme of like complete opposite of what you grew up around, sometimes that can be unhealthy in the sense that you are avoiding the past and you're actually avoiding some healing in that process too because you're just kind of writing off everything as like terrible and for me like that's been such a real thing because I have coped with past trauma in a way where I've closed it up put it in the back of my mind left it there and let it be Can you help mama? Is your leg 
leg stuck? No. Okay. Are you all right? No. You need my help. Okay, you need my help. And realizing that the way that I used to cope with things of my past or just pain and hurt in general was not a healthy way. It was a way that I developed when I was very small. I didn't understand what else to do. And so we all do that, right? Like, especially if you experience negative things early on in life, you develop these very childlike ways of coping and they stick with you. Now that I'm married, I <laughs> Now that I'm married, it's not self. Now that I'm a mom, it's not self. I'm being utilized for more than just my own experience, more than just my own stuff. Like they need me. And innately, I want to be needed. Innately, I want to be a nurturer. Like that's in my biology, right? But if I'm holding on to, whether indirectly, directly, consciously, unconsciously, holding on to things that cause me pain and just rehashing in my mind stuff that brings me pain, I can't fully be who I'm supposed to be for them who I'm supposed to fully be for me. And that's, I think, the battle that so many of us face, whether we're moms and fathers and married or not. But what marriage and becoming parents shows you is like, you better get it together because if you don't, that little one is going to reciprocate the energy that you give. Mommy! You know? I'm coming. You want some what? I'm coming. You want some water in here? No. What do you want? I'm coming. Okay. She talking. <laughs> Say oh, oh, Sarai. How you gonna move the whole tripod? No. <laughs> Sarai low key becoming a baby's kid, okay? Let's just, can we just, she's about to be too soon. She's already, I feel like she's already developmentally there. Here, take this. No, you can't have none of my coffee. That's not happening. No. She's been into this thing where she wants to pour water or anything like water <laughs> snacks into other containers. So, so she'll find her toys that have any sort of like pivot dip and want to pour water, anything in them. But there comes a point where we have those times and things happen and they shed light on something in us that we don't want to pay attention to, we don't want to address. So we just pack it back up and put it away. But every single time you're in a moment of like fear or you're in a moment of conflict, like those things pop back out. And for me, like that was what ha was happening. Like since I've been with Mark, a lot of my stuff that I learned that I didn't choose to learn when it comes to handling conflict, being violent, being harsh with my words, not realizing the impact of my actions, especially because I'm so wrapped up in the hurt and pain that that conflict triggers in me. There's been the last like few fights that me and Mark have had where just things were getting too intense and it was me. You know, it was my inability to calm down and understanding that I don't want to be that way. It's a very specific set of conditions that take me to this like over the top, intense emotional place. There has to be a specific set of circumstances. I have to love you. I have to be in a vulnerable position with you and I have to feel in any way threatened. If those three things are happening, in a scenario, not to say that I can't co completely control myself, but when it gets to a point, I can't control myself. So it's gonna take time to break that down. I'm just now getting to the spiritual place, the mental place, to even be as aware of what's going on. But actually, I've been aware for the past, I would say, couple of years. It's another thing to be ready to change. And this pregnancy has been such a rough one mentally. I got to a point where I was just like, I'm ready. Like I'm ready to change. I'm ready to leave those behaviors behind. Those things, especially in black families that just get passed down that are not good for us. I feel like my generation, we are like the first generation of black and brown kids that have been able to have this level
level of freedom in life. And that level of freedom has come a, an opportunity to change in a new way. And I think every generation has their opportunity in some way, but it's always difficult. Whatever continues to get passed down that is not good, but it's accepted and it's normalized, every generation has the opportunity to change it. But it's a matter of, are you making that decision? Are you gonna be the generation that cuts it off? And Mark and I have decided like we are, we are that generation that's gonna cut it off, but that's not easy. And it's hard when you love people so much, but you know that how they do certain things is just not right. And to break away is to break away from more than just the bad thing. Sometimes you have to be completely separated and loving from afar and recognizing that like everybody has their truth, right? And everybody's gonna tell their side of the story however they perceive it and that's okay like we all have that right and I feel especially when it comes to family that's where we tend to slip that's where we tend to be like I love you too much to like completely break away I, I love you too much to I don't want to let you go I want to hold on to you because you're my mom you're my dad you're my sister you're my brother but your heart knows they have the same choices you have. And if they're choosing one thing that you know is not right for you, you have to be ready to like pivot and go. <sighs> it's mine. Okay, here. Psych. Psych. Here. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to take your hair down.